Hi, and welcome to the latest IoT Now Quickfire interview, in which we're talking about scaling up security with eSIM. And I'm delighted to have here Marco Byveltz, who is Senior Vice President for Europe and Asia Pacific at Core Wireless. Marco, good to have you here. Thanks for having me, Jeremy. Appreciate it. Marco, organizations have traditionally relied on cellular connectivity that's delivered via SIM, uh, subscriber identity module, and for their IoT deployments. But there are some issues with that approach for organizations. Can you explain what the problem is and why they're looking at eSIM? Yeah, so, so I think fundamentally there are two problems with traditional SIM cards, um, uh, which have to do with also the IoT adoption that is impeded by those, uh, uh, those factors. So first of all, I think security has been one of the issues for the adoption of, uh, of IoT in general, and also for the adoption of uh, connectivity solutions uh, with, with many customers that we that we see. So that's that's one factor that is playing into that. Secondly, uh, we noticed that uh, there's no single solution out there that has that quality of service, that footprint that's providing customers with a single solution that they can use for IoT deployments, which fundamentally increases their costs for their IoT deployments and risks their investments on their IoT. So those two factors uh, lead customers towards eSIM, and eSIM is actually addressing those two, uh, those two issues in, a, in different ways, which I will elaborate on uh, probably later. Okay, so, so what exactly are the key drivers and the primary use cases for eSIM? And are there any uh, foreseeable challenges with security there? Yeah, so so let's let let's look into the three main use cases that we that we see for eSIM. Uh, fundamentally, those are the main drivers for eSIM in the marketplace. So first of all, to my earlier point, connectivity, ubiquitous connectivity is is crucial to make sure that we have a, a solution that is uh, cost effective. So uh, a, a normal SIM card just provides a single carrier uh, connectivity which is limited by definition. eSIM, with the ability to download profiles, obviously has that flexibility to download other carriers where, where that's needed. And in some cases, you, you cannot work with a roaming solution. You have to have local connectivity because of restrictions, legislation, policies, maybe even latency issues that, that require to use local profiles. So that's that's one big reason. Um, the other reason is, is, is around uh, future proofing. Think about many of the IoT devices go into the field for many years. Um, well, I think one of the uh, known examples is a smart meter that is in the field for 15, even 20 years. And in that 20 years, the external factors are changing. We've been facing already some 2G sunsets, which have caused customers to swap their devices, which is extremely expensive. So eSIM would allow to future proof those devices. Uh, and, and coping with those unknown external factors. Um, a third element of eSIM or a third use case that we distinguish is, is reducing the complexity in manufacturing devices. So this is very much tied into OEMs that are manufacturing devices on a single location and they have to deploy globally. They don't know where the device is going to end up, so they don't know which uh, connectivity they have to provision on, on their devices. And eSIM, with the ability to download that profile once it's deployed in the field and, and, and has this local uh, connectivity enabled, uh, solves that uh, complexity in the, uh, in the logistical chain and in the manufacturing process as well, which in its turn reduces costs, uh, reduces operational burden, and therefore facilitates the adoption for uh, IoT with our customers. So those are the three main use cases that we see. A fourth one that we that we see as well, which is related to the security aspect that you alluded to, is the fact that because the eSIM allows for downloading of profile, soldering a SIM card on a PCB on a device does no longer mean that you have to change the whole device if you if you change the carrier. So uh, embedding a SIM card on a device means uh, enhanced security levels because you cannot take it out of the SIM card, so there's less risk to uh, to fraud. Of the SIM card, so those four elements we do see as the main drivers for uh, for eSIM. So, could you walk us briefly through a typical eSIM connectivity infrastructure and give us an idea of where organisations should be thinking their levels of security fit in? Right, right. 
So the architecture obviously consists of a, of an eSIM, uh, which is called EUICC in, in the eSIM world. Uh, that's the physical uh, piece, uh, the physical element uh, that contains the eSIM profile. So that's a, that's a must-have uh, in the eSIM ecosystem, as well as the RSP, the remote SIM provisioning platform. So those two allow for remote SIM provisioning over the air. Uh, but we do see that as as the plumbing, right? So those are the necessary elements to to do some switching. But it's not sufficient to actually use eSIM capabilities in a smart way. So our ecosystem, Core's ecosystem, consists of a number of elements that, on top of that, including the core network. So where the the eSIM profile uh, management is doing is being done by the RSP platform, the core network allows us to build our own uh, eSIM profile and provide a very strong bootstrap that can be used globally and also provides us with full control and flexibility over that connectivity as we control the core network. So those two elements are fundamentally the backbone of our solution. And on top of that, um, I think that's important to mention, uh, the connectivity management platform, Connectivity Pro that we're using is actually orchestrating uh, all those use cases. The fact that you can switch uh, doesn't mean that, that you automatically switch at the right time. So doing the orchestration of the eSIM profile management, the switching, the downloading, everything related to that is done through our connectivity management platform. Uh, maybe last thing to, to, to highlight, um, I think something that is missed um, uh, or not considered by many people, is the fact that eSIM allows us to uh, increase the security levels through new applications on the eSIM like uh, cloud to device authentication and like data encryption on the SIM card itself. Those are new uh, uh, use cases that weren't possible before and are enabled by eSIM. So uh, those elements uh, are to us are crucial when you consider an eSIM architecture. The GSMA security accreditation scheme is trying to help with a standard approach to certification for physical SIM and RSP. How do you think this impacts eSIM adoption by the market? Well, it's, a, it's, an, important, it's an important aspect, clearly. Um, I think there's been a lot of concern around the security of eSIM because in the end, you're downloading an, an eSIM profile, a carrier profile over the air to, to, your, uh, to your SIM card. So we understand there are concerns and, and the GSMA has designed a solution um, that is inherently secure, and by uh, applying this SAS uh, uh, certification scheme, customers actually know that the solution that is being used is secure. So it gives a level uh, of, of comfort, a level of security that, that customers can rely on. So we do believe that that's, adopting that solution is important for the adoption of eSIM. And actually, we also see that happening with the carriers, right? A lot of the carriers only allow uh, as he has certified uh, RSP platforms to be working with their eSIM profiles. We, so we do we see it as a prerequisite to use as he has certified platforms to allow uh, the adoption of eSIM and to build out that rich uh, ecosystem of carriers, which is actually fundamental to being successful in the eSIM space. It's not just about the technology. It's also about building out that rich ecosystem of, of carrier partnerships for eSIM and the SES certification, uh, let's say, stamp is, is in many cases conditional to that. Finally, Marco, what steps should any business take if it wants to deploy an eSIM solution? Yeah, that's a very good question because many people consider it and we get that question a lot. Uh, and fundamentally, I think there are three items that one should consider. The first one is related to uh, considering connectivity like you would consider normal connectivity, right? Think about what are my latency requirements? What is my footprint? Are there any restrictions in, in regions that I deploy my solution? So those are normal considerations when you would pick your connectivity. So that's one. Uh, the second one is related to the uh, the solution that you actually adopt from your from your solution provider, um, where people think uh, eSIM to be fully flexible and fully, uh, let's say, open. There still is a limitation to the access of carrier profiles. So the ability to switch depends on the relationships that your vendor has with the carriers and the riches of the ecosystem. So that is very important to consider because you're in the end bound to that ecosystem of carriers of, of, of networks that is being provided to that solution. A third element um, is related to the device itself. So we have to consider the fact that there is a dependency of the device 
to work with the ESIM standards. So it has to be compatible with the GSMA standards. And we do see still a lot of devices out there that are not necessarily working with ESIM out of the box. So working with a party that can advise you, that can consult you um, uh, on the device verification to make sure that it's compatible with ESIM and also provides you with the ESIM verification services to us is, is very critical in adoption uh, in, in choosing your eSIM solution. Well, that's all we have time for. Um, I've been talking to Marco Bivels. Marco, thanks very much for your time. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you for all at Core Wireless for, for this. It's great to have the insight. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, your time. And until the next IoT Now quickfire video, we look forward to seeing you then.